Hi everyone, Taya here from Quilting Delights and we are showing you how to use this amazing Make It 8 marking ruler today. The first set of blocks that I'm going to make are eight at a time and we're going to use our ruler, mark our lines, and then we're going to sew them. And I'm sewing from corner to valley. You can see when we sew here, we're going to stop at the end of the line that we drew and then turn and go back out to the corner, back down to the valley, back out to the corner, valley, corner, valley, corner. So we've got these all sewn. Now I'm going to cut this apart and it's super simple. I'm going to just cut up the middle and then I'm going to cut on each of these lines. This is much like cutting a pizza, only not as tasty. So we're just going to cut these apart and then I'm going to press them and show you how to use the block lock ruler to square them up and show you how to make the floating, I'm sorry, not the floating, I'm going to show you how to make the stars and flowers block with two 10 inch squares of colored fabric and two 10 inch squares of background fabric. So let me just finish cutting these apart. It's so nice not to have to think about the angles or anything. This Market 8 ruler just is perfect for doing this. All right, now we're going to press these open and look at that, make it eight actually gives us eight half square triangles. I have my little ruler and my little mat, which I really, really love. Let's get these pressed open. Your little ruler? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my little iron and my little pressing mat, which I really love. And I'm going to press these to the dark side, the darker fabric and it doesn't take any time at all. And look there, we've got eight of these cut, eight of these pressed and ready to go. I'm gonna use my block lock ruler. I'm telling you that this was one of the most instrumental changes in my quilting life when I discovered the block lock ruler. It actually snugs up to the high side of the seam and allows us to Flip the block, flip the ruler, and square these up perfectly. When you're working with half square triangles, the key to having them come together with really, really nice quarter inch seams and quarter, uh, quarter inch seams and sharp points is you have to get the point on either end of the half square triangle sharp. So that's what I'm going to do real quick here. And the block lock ruler, in my opinion, is the best tool for that. There are lots of rulers out there, but there isn't one out there that works like this. They come in different sizes. The set that I use all the time is the two and a half, four and a half, and six and a half. This happens to be a four and a half inch ruler, which is perfect for the size block that we're doing today. And there we have our eight half square triangles, just fast as can be. Don't forget, to close, don't forget to close your rotary cutter, and we'll set those aside, get rid of all of that. Now, remember I said at the beginning, a couple things I want to just uh, remind you of. When you're cutting your fabrics, when you're cutting your squares, I start out, if I have a charm pack or a layer cake, those are 5-inch squares or 10-inch squares. I don't have a choice about what to cut there. But in the instructions and on the instructions for the ruler, it tells you, and I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you to increase the square size by a quarter inch. It just gives you a little more room to square up with. And that's what I did on the background, which was why I had a little bit to cut off. Now, we've got our eight half square triangles. Remember I said two, two 10 inch squares of color and two 10 inch squares of background. My other blocks, the other 10 inch square and background, I'm also going to cut those four and a half inches, and you can see what we're going to do here. I'm just taking my lock block ruler. I had already cut it apart into four bigger squares, but I'm just going to square those up. I have my edges nice and smooth already on one side, so I only have to score up the two sides. And now, watch the magic happen on this block. So, we can either make the flower block, 
which is like this. The flower block takes one colored square, one background square, one half square triangle on one side, and one half square triangle on the other side. And it comes together just like that. This is one fourth of the entire block, but it makes a beautiful flower. And you're going to sew these together, and then you're going to sew them to each other. Now, one of the things I want to share with you about a four patch, this is a four patch. I, I think of everything as either a nine patch or a four patch, or for example, our floating star block is a 25 patch. Each of them have a characteristic that's really important. On the four patch, what you want to do is you want to pinwheel the center seam. If you don't know how to pinwheel a center seam, then um, do a Google search and um, look up pinwheeling a four patch. It makes all the difference in the world. What that does is it sends all of the seams in the same direction. So now when I take this four patch and I put it next to another four patch and another four patch and another four patch and another four patch, all of those seams are going to be alternating and will nest together perfectly. That's really, really important when you have this kind of bulk in the half square triangles. The other thing I want to make sure that everyone understands, um, this is a trick I learned a long time ago, is that you can see here that the seam of the half square triangle is going down. So you want to run that through your sewing machine this way. You want to run it through, so here's your foot, you want to run it through this way so that you're going into the seam of the half square triangle. When you get to the bottom half, you're going to look at this and you're going to go, oh, well I can't do that. Because if you're sewing this way, you're going to run into the seam. And this is where people have, this is where quilters have a problem with half square triangles because what's going to happen is the foot is going to push and it'll mess this up maybe a little bit and the feed dogs are going to pull and then when you take it out of your sewing machine, you're off by that much, by a lot. And if you're that much off, you're not going to get a really sharp point. So my suggestion to you is you look at your squares. And on this one, the top half of this block, we're going to flip this over and we're going to sew with the half square triangle on the bottom because then it will sew into the seam. The other block, the other half of this, when you look at it, you can see that the, the seam is going the wrong direction. We know we're going to have a problem with that. Well, just pick it up and flip it over and sew it this way. And then when you're done, turn it over and put it back. But you've got to be really, really, really conscientious and exact about matching up those points with the edge of the fabric. That's what's going to make a difference for you. Then you're going to sew them together. When you sew them together, when you sew this half to this half, now you have an issue because on one side it's going to be the correct direction, but on the other side you're going to be sewing into the wrong direction on the half square triangle. So here's the trick on putting the four of them together, this row with this row. Sew the top part, so for example we're going to sew down the seam here, we're going to get past the halfway point, and then guess what? I'm going to take it out of my sewing machine and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew now from this point to the center. So there's nothing that says you have to sew the entire seam all at once. If what you want is perfect corners and perfect points on your half square triangles, um, either singly or together, um, learn that it's okay to sew halfway, turn it over and sew the other half. It's critical that you get these corners exactly where they need to be. Now you can't see it right here, but you'll see it in the pattern that you, when you sew these all together and you pinwheel the centers, we'll show you what that looks like, but you're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance on either um, on any of these three points. So you'll see that in the pattern, but I just wanted to talk about it. Now the other thing that you can do is you can take four of these and uh, four of them, this is where it's really fun to make these scrappy. Oh my gosh, it's just such a kick in the pants. And we're going to uh, just imagine if we had all of these center squares different colors and we could make a star. So this is the other half of the pattern. This is the star pattern and it makes an absolutely beautiful star with all of the seams nested and then uh, these 
could be made as a flying geese. This section here could be made as a flying geese, but when you do it this way with half square triangles, oh my gosh, the seams are flat as a pancake. All of them come together and are flat as a pancake. And they also nest with the block that's next to it. So all of a sudden, you've got the flattest block possible with perfect seam allowances. And you're going to see that in the pictures that we post with this video. Um, you'll see just how perfect these intersections are here and how perfect the outside star points are in our block um, with the sashing. So those are some helpful hints on the stars and flower quilt and we wish you the very best and send us send us pictures. Send them to our website at www.quiltingdelights.com. You can post them on our Facebook page, Quilting Delights, and check in our YouTube channel and make sure that you ring the bell and sign up so that you get all of our notifications. That's youtube.com forward slash Quilting Delights. Thanks and we'll see you soon.